I'm Kelsey. I'm the associate food editor at Food & Wine. I am currently working from home. Welcome to my New York apartment kitchen. It is cozy. Today, I really wanna make some chocolate chip cookies because what is more comforting than a chocolate chip cookie? I keep my aprons um, like most people do under my television. We're gonna be in all two rooms of my apartment. The only thing I've done ahead of time is um, I pulled butter out of the oven last night. Out of the oven. The only thing I did ahead of time was pull my butter out of the fridge last night and I've preheated my oven. So let's get some ingredients. I've got all purpose flour, granulated sugar, and light brown sugar. They have a slightly different flavor and they react with the different ingredients to kind of give you that perfect balance of not too cakey of a cookie, not too chewy of a cookie. Some chocolate. So um, I have a very normal amount of chocolate in my cupboard. I'm gonna do a little milk chocolate, a little semi-sweet, and a little bittersweet. And it's gonna add up to about a pound. I like um, doing a little flaky salt on the cookies. And this is actually a salt that a colleague gave me and it has cinnamon and nutmeg in it. Oh, it smells so good. So come with me to my other cabinet. And then let's go to my living room and get my KitchenAid. Butter, really soft butter. Now the reason you want soft butter is because it uh, creams together with sugar so much more easily. Sometimes I'll put um, the sticks on top of my preheating oven. You don't want it to melt on the outside and stay hard on the inside, so you wanna be careful. Sugar, brown sugar smells so good. It doesn't need to be super packed, but I kind of like pressing it in with my hand while I'm pulling it from the bag. A cup plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar. This is making, I should say, um, six dozen cookies, which is so many cookies. I'm gonna bake some off, I'm gonna freeze some of the dough already portioned, and then in sanitized containers, share some with my neighbors. With contactless delivery, we're not gonna see each other or be closer than six feet apart. And my eggs. I'm gonna crack them flat on my counter. I'll try to tilt you down so you can see. I don't know if I can do this I am not a person that can do like the one-handed crack that's really smooth. Flat on the counter, it's just easier. Finally, vanilla. So that's my wet ingredient set. I'm gonna set them aside for right now and switch to the dry. We'll start with the flour. I need three cups. Okay, so then I have like a mounding cup and just scrape that right back into the bag. Only spilled a little bit, which is pretty good. One and a half teaspoons of baking soda and give a nice rise to the cookies. It's also gonna help them brown. Salt, so important. Okay, so these are my dry ingredients except for the chocolate. This is my whole counter, by the way. <laughs> I like using bars of chocolate instead of chips. I think they have a better texture. The shards are so nice in the cookies. They melt at different rates. You have like big chunks, like melty bits and it just incorporates into the batter better and I think it's delicious. And I'm just gonna do a collection of the ones I have. Something like opening, it's kind of like opening a Christmas present, opening a chocolate bar. Look at this like super chunky chocolate. So good. Perfect. Um. Okay, that's what happens when you're shorter than your cabinet. It's actually the biggest kitchen I've ever had in New York. It works. Get my cutting board. Chopping chocolate's also like pretty cathartic. See, especially like the dark chocolate kind of shaves and then like covered in chocolate. So good. I think cookies are one of the more fun things to bake because you can play with the variables so much and still get a good product. And I know what I like in a cookie, um, which is crispy edges, slightly chewy center, not super thick, but they're all still good. So it's a great thing to kind of make a bunch of batches of and figure out what you like. Okay, chocolate is chopped. I'm gonna bring my ingredients to the living room because that's where we cook. Welcome to my second kitchen, also known as my living room. First, we're going to cream the butter and the sugar, the vanilla and the eggs all together. Now, this is something you could do by hand, but you really need to make sure that you cream the butter into the sugar well. It's gonna take about five minutes. Uh, sorry. Plug in your stand mixer too. 
Okay, my outlet isn't working. Okay, so I'm gonna use my stand mixer. It's gonna take about five minutes. Um, I even brought a little timer out because I really wanna let it take the five minutes. It's combined, it's not ready. I'm gonna show you. So you can see the sugar and the butter are all combined together, but it's still really grainy and separate. It hasn't lightened in color. It's not aerated and creamy. It needs to keep going. Three and a half minutes and I'm gonna scrape down the sides. There's a different texture already. See that? It's like shades lighter in color. It's almost ready. So you see, it's like literally, there's stiff peaks. It's so much more aerated. There, the volume has gotten larger because there's air incorporated into it. Um, it's not just combined, it's changed. I'm gonna scrape all of this. Don't wanna lose any delicious butter and sugar. And I'm going to be in the, um, I just totally lost my train of thought. I haven't seen another person in real life in a long time, so. I find this kind of baking really calming. They're usually pretty simple recipes, so you can just follow along and you get something that smells and tastes delicious after not too much time. More complicated technical baking, I find really challenging and fun, but a little less relaxing. The secret to cookies that are not tough is not overworking the gluten in the flour. I wanna just incorporate the flour so there's no bits of flour. It's a little easier to mix in in bits. I'm gonna do it in about thirds, so. My batter is a little shaggy, mostly incorporated, but you see there's still flour bits in. I'm gonna add my chocolate right now. Look at that. I mean, that's a snack, right? I'm cutting through the center, dragging through, getting everything nice and mixed. And now we're gonna chill the batter. Um, it's really important, no matter what cookie recipe you're using, chill the batter. Part of the reason cookies spread or don't, or get really domed and high, or super flat and lacy, is butter spreading in the oven. And kind of like when you're working with pie dough, you wanna use really cold fat. And the reason you wanna use that cold fat is when it goes into the oven, it doesn't completely melt right away. This looks really good. <laughs> I have my all mixed up cookie dough. I'm going to uh, bring this to the kitchen, cover it up and chill it. So come with me. Okay, today is the day of everything breaking. Right there, next to the eggs. And that's gonna sit for an hour, hydrate the dough, get it nice and cold before we scoop and bake. See you then. We have an hour. And what, do you, what can you do with an hour? I'm gonna do some dishes because uh, dishes are really annoying and not calming and not great, but dishes being done is really calming and wonderful and great. And it's like a gift of calmness to future Kelsey. Anything can be meditative. The timer is about to go off. The cookies have been chilling for, there it is. So I can take the lid off. I have my beautiful chilled dough right here. My beautiful little workhorse of an oven doesn't fit a half uh, rimmed baking sheet, so I'm gonna use a quarter, and I've lined it with a little piece of parchment. I'm also gonna use a cookie scoop, well, a scoop. I've deemed it a cookie scoop. This is about one and a half tablespoons, and I want two tablespoon mounds, so I'm gonna do a heaping scoop. When I say heaping, so I'm actually just gonna do four per sheet, eight cookies at a time, just, just for me. <laughs> Cookie dough freezes beautifully, and what you can do is scoop them right under your baking sheet, kind of close together, freeze them in a single layer, and then when they're solid, pop them in a resealable silicone or plastic baggie, and then you have cookies on demand, because you can bake one at a time or a whole batch. I have preheated my oven to 350 degrees and I'm using an oven thermometer. No matter what the dial says, oven temperatures range a lot and you kind of have to learn your oven, the hot spots, what temperature it says it is versus what temperature it actually is. Okay, so I'm gonna open my oven and there you go. Now I'm gonna rotate them front to back and top to bottom halfway through baking because ovens have different hot spots. So I'll see you soon. Okay, I think they're ready. Um, it hasn't been 
exactly the full length of time listed in the recipe, but that's an important tip. Look for those visual cues first. We have got cookies. Oh my gosh. They smell so good. <laughs> While they're still hot, I'm going to sprinkle them with a little sea salt. You know that scent where it's just like permeating the room? It's a little bittersweet. It just smells so good. And when I sprinkle the salt on that has the cinnamon and nutmeg, whoa. That was an emergency alert from New York. Um, everything's fine. See how they've spread? Like that one's almost touching, but not quite. Oh my gosh, so delicious. Are you kidding me? Can you hear this? Can you see that? Look at these layers of melted chocolate. It's perfect. Whether you are working from home or an essential worker, thank you so much for what you're doing. Baking can be really calming and I hope this was calming for you. Let me know what you do to calm down. Maybe it's eating chocolate chip cookies because that's really calming too. Bye.